Hi, I'm Cody Hendrickson. Today we're going to be looking at how to actually configure your Mac run either Yosemite Mavericks or El Capitan so you can run and debug using Eclipse and then using the GDB. We have to do a couple configuration changes for that, so we're going to go ahead and take a look at that and see how to make that work. We need to make some changes to our actual system in order to have access to GDB since Mac no longer support or we need to make some changes since Mac no longer ships GDB as part of their default image within their systems. And so this works with using Yosemite or El Capitan or Mavericks for their version of op whichever version of your operating system you're using. So you can actually have that. This assumes, of course, you've already installed Xcode because you're doing some other development. So you have access to those tools. We're going to have to make some changes, though, to this so we can actually have access to it. So what we have to do is first we have to open up Terminal. I've got it showing up here on screen right now. As you can see, that's available through your Applications folder, then the Utilities folder where you get to Terminal through that. You can also do it, just do Command Space and type in Terminal, and it'll pop up immediately for you. In our terminal windows, where we're going to first start off with that, and the first thing we need to do is we need to go to um, type in a command for that, and so just type in what we have right here. So slash user slash bin slash ruby, and then dash e, and then the argument we're going to pass that is going to be dollar sign, and then parens curl dash fs capital S capital L, and then we're going to pass it a web address for homebrew because we're going to install homebrew, which allows us access to the GDB first. So the, um, that we use the HTTPS for the secure socket. And then we are going to do whack whack. And then after that, it's raw.github user content.com slash and then homebrew with a capital H. And don't worry about the line wrapping on this. Again, as long as you have it uh, typed out exactly, you'll be good to go. Slash and then install slash master for the master trunk slash install again and then in parens in quotes and so that command right there we're going to go again we're using ruby to get this information we're going to install homebrew to our machines as the first step and we press enter takes a little bit of time we will know we are done with this when we get back to our prompt the general process though is we want to make sure that we say yes as needed and then we'll get us back to our prompt really indicated by again in this case right here with that tilde and right here, as you can see, it says the script is going to install these components, making these groups writable and following directors of the owner set to you or their admin. And the big thing we're looking at for this specifically right here is the slash user slash local slash bin. That is where we're going to see uh, GDP installed. So press enter to continue any of the key report. Make sure you press your enter key. And type in your password. Goes through, does the installation, it does a download. Of course, obviously, you'll need to be connected to the internet for this, whether it be Wi Fi or otherwise. As you can see, it's downloaded information from Homebrew's GitHub branch, grabs the information, and you can run Brew Help if necessary to get started. Again, like I said, we're only installing GDB at this time, but you could use Homebrew to install other components to your Mac if you wish. So our next thing we're going to do is we want to install a component for this, and that's we're going to type in Brew to get access to our Homebrew program we've installed for this. And then type in Tap, because we're going to tap that. And Homebrew slash dupes press enter. And so we were tapping that, it gives our clone, so it's going to get that information from the dupes folder and clone it into our machine. We have that um, tap 38 from there, 103 files, etc. Brings us right back to our prompt, we're good to go for that. Our next step is to actually install GDB. So we type in brew, then install, and then GDB. And it's going to grab the associated component for that. It's going to grab this. You want to make sure you code sign this and it gives you some information to do that. We'll be doing that as we go through this process, so no stress there. We're now back at that. We've installed GDB to our user local bin. You notice that it has that seller in there. Don't worry about that. We'll take care of that later. And so the next thing we need to do is we need to open up our keychain access application. Again, I'm really a big favor of use of the command uh, feature, so command space, and type in keychain access. And as you can see, it prompts up immediately. Load that up. Once we open Keychain Assistant, we want to go ahead and go up here to the drop down menu. From the drop down menu, we're going to choose Keychain Access. From Keychain Access, we're going to go down to the Certificate Assistant. From there, we're going to choose the option to create a certificate. Again, our drop down menu, Create Keychain Access to Certificate Assistant, and down to Create a Certificate. And it brings us the option to create our own certificate. And so for this one, this is where we're going to get the information for this so we can actually make it so we can run GDB and have it signed by us so it has access to it. So we're going to give it a name first, and that's gdb-cert. And its identity type is a self-signed root, not leaf, so default's fine for that. 
However, for the certificate type, we want to make sure we, on that drop-down menu, we choose code signing. So we have a name again of GDB cert. It is a self-signing root, and it's a code sign. And then we want to make sure that we check to override the defaults for that, so we can go through and identify the information for that. And we'll go ahead and hit continue. And we're, it gives us a warning that we are actually creating a self-signed certificate. You could cause yourself some trouble with this, but you're doing this for making yourself able to write your code and debug it in C++, so we want to make sure we do say continue. And the die, um, number of validity on that, uh, the serial number of one is fantastic. We're going to just get that for 999. We're going to make it so it's available basically so you don't have to worry about it again for quite a while. If we have to make a new one again at that point, we can always recreate one, but three years is generally enough for us not have to worry. We just leave that information, we don't have to have a selection for any address, the name is still BGD cert. We leave that information right there, we don't have to have anything on that. Continue again. And it's key size. Find any, leave that at default, hit continue again. Okay, and so on the key suggestion, just hit continue on that screen. On the extended key uh, suggestion, again, we have that check for code sign, that's all we're worried about for this. Continue again. Continue again, don't worry about that. Continue again. Now on the keychain, this last one right here, this is where we actually do want to choose to choose system. We want this to be a system level keychain, something that is on the machine regardless of how we're using it. So we choose system for that, and then we hit create. You'll have to type in your password yet again, and choose modify keychain. You've now created that uh, GDB cert certificate. Go ahead and choose done. We'll go back to the keychain access. We're going to go to our system keychain that we have up here in that specification. We're going to do our system section. And from there, we're going to go ahead and we're going to find our GDB cert, the one we just made. We're going to right click on it. And we're going to choose get info. So again, right clicking on that and choosing get info. And then we need to modify our trust for that. So we're going to go over here to our trust section, click on the down triangle. And we want to have, instead of system defaults, we have to have this set, so we're going to use this, when using the system default, we are going to go down to our code signing and set always trust. So we have a custom settings for this, and the code signing is going to be set for always trust. So again, certificate use custom settings, code signing set to always trust. We close that. We have made a system change, so we have to type in our password yet again. They want to make sure we understand that we are making changes to this. We say OK. We then need to make sure we quit keychain access. So go up here to either the drop down menu and choose quit keychain access, or as you can see right here, command Q to simply quit that program. Now we need to go and actually do some more work within terminal. So we kept terminal open, we're gonna go back into that. And we have to kill a couple processes so we can reload this properly so we have access to the G uh, GDB or the debugger. And so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do sudo and then kill all and then task gated. So in this case, we're in, rather than finding the specific task, we're gonna just kill the one that's called task gated to save some time and type that in, press enter. Again, it asks us to type in our password. Please type in your password for your user, press enter. It's then killed that. The next thing we need to do is we need to code sign that, what it warned us about earlier. As you can see, see right here, we have to code sign it. This is where we're gonna do that right now. So we type in code sign. And after code sign, we do dash fs. We're going to do a force replace and set that in. And then we called it gdb dash cert, keeping that same name that we used throughout that. And then pathing it to where we save that. So slash user, slash local, slash bin, slash gdb. So we installed the user slash local slash bin is where we installed that. It's in that folder. We go ahead and press have to type in our username and password. We then need to go back to, and we need to relaunch our task gate. So we type in launch CTL, then load in a space, and then slash system, slash library, slash launch demons slash com dot apple dot task gated dot plist. Again, don't worry about the wrapping on that. Your size of your uh, screen doesn't matter for this. And press enter. And now once we've done that, we can set our Eclipse preferences so that we have a GDB as our actual debugging tool and we can do debugging inside C++. What we need to do after we've done the setup uh, part for getting the debug installed and that we have to actually make the configuration change to Eclipse for it. To access that we go up here and do Eclipse. We go to Eclipse, we go to Preferences. 
And under preferences, we go down to C++. We go into the debug folder, and we find the GDB section on that. And on that spot, we're going to change that. We're going to browse. We're going to go to our drive. And we're going to go down to our folder user and local and bin. And as you can see in there, we have that GDB that we just installed. We choose open. And again, notice how it has that addition of that user slash local slash seller comment. That just is a re-reference for us. So we don't have to worry about that. Like I said, nothing to worry about that. We choose apply. Choose OK. Any existing projects you may have made may need to have that uh, properly set for the individual projects. But we now have it set so that GDB is the default debugger for our C++ projects, allowing us to actually do debug of our code here in C++. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and do any debugging. Take a look at that. Please take a look at the debug video for more assistance as you actually learn how to do debugging using C++. Thanks, and have a great night.